Hey YouTube, welcome to another episode of Full Spectrum Survival and this week's Mailbox Monday, where we're answering your questions each week for the summer. We've seen an inundation of news from health organizations around the world that are covering the effects of Japan's nuclear disaster at Fukushima. There's a lot of misleading information out there, with some widely watched organizations saying that there are no immediate health effects, all the way to studies showing a 24% increase in infant hypothyroidism here in the U.S. as a direct result of the accident. Now, no matter how you interpret the information that we're presented with, there is some undeniability in the fact that a nuclear accident did take place, one that released dangerous radioisotopes into the air and continues to release radioactive water into the ocean. Now, with that, we've had some questions regarding protecting ourselves from radiation. Ian Dorota asks, would iodine tabs have worked for Japan if they had them or they were issued, and how soon after an event do you need to take them? During a nuclear event, radioisotopes are released into the air in the surrounding environment. The majority of contamination often comes from indirect exposure to the isotopes when radiation is released into the atmosphere and then falls back to earth with rain. The radiation is then absorbed by the plants that we eat, the animals that are in our food chain that eat the grass, and us absorbing affected water. One of the greatest scientific risks to a nuclear event is the exposure to radioactive iodine. Radioiodine is one of the byproducts of uranium fission and active in all nuclear power plants. As humans, our bodies absorb iodine into one particular spot, the thyroid, providing a concentration spot for radioiodine to collect. And as radioiodine builds up in our thyroids, it releases little bursts of radiation that can cause DNA changes in our systems, such as limiting normal cell growth and causing cancer. Now to counter the effects of radioiodine, governing bodies suggest stable iodine, or KI, as a standard treatment for radiation exposure. Since our bodies don't know the difference between stable iodine and radioactive iodine, our thyroid will fill up with whatever we give it first. So taking stable iodine at the direction of your doctor or health officials and at the onset of a nuclear event will give you a protective window of 24 hours against major absorption of radioiodine for each dose taken. Now there are also some great natural absorbers for ingested radiation, including pectin, which you can find in many fruits, in wine, and can be purchased as a canning supply. Pectin swells in our digestive tract, attaching itself to heavy metals and radioisotopes, and allowing us to pass the radioisotopes on as waste. Pectin was given to the children of Chernobyl's nuclear accident with noted efficiency, reducing their exposure and limiting their risk for radiation-related diseases. We put some links down in the description box so that you can do your own research. There are some dangers in taking even stable iodine and the effects that it can have on your body, or you could have an allergy to it, so it's important to do that research now to find out what's going to be best for you, for your group, or for your family. As always, we appreciate the views. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to send them in to us. We'll see you guys next week on another Mailbox Monday.